Now at six, election officials in Oklahoma look to draw new workers with better pay. Plus, authorities charge a Newton County deputy with domestic assault. And Carthage officials anticipate a financial boost for the city with the start of Marion Days. The four states most watched news starts now. With election authorities already preparing for August and November elections, they're looking to find workers to help staff the polls. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Tanya Bach. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on how Oklahoma hopes an increase in pay will bring out more workers. With November 5th fast approaching, local election officials are hoping to find enough workers to staff the polls. Oklahoma state law requires each voting precinct to have at least three workers ready to fulfill the roles of an inspector, a judge, and a clerk. An inspector is the primary officer of a precinct election board. A judge helps to check the proof of identity of each voter, while clerk issues ballots. Without each of these roles filled, a precinct is not allowed to open, and staffing has become an issue as workers retire from participating. A lot of our poll workers are older because they, they're retired, so they have the, the time that they can volunteer. Um, and as those workers age out, then we definitely would, would need some new poll workers. But a bill passed in 2023 hopes to change that for Oklahoma precincts. Now poll worker pay is being doubled, with roles like election judges being paid $200 rather than $100. Election officials say they hope the increase will help with poll worker recruitment and retention. Staff at the Ottawa County Election Board say they are already seeing the results. I've had several of my poll workers say that, that uh, the increase in pay is definitely keeping them around. Um, but I've had more people volunteer to be a poll worker. That, and it, so I do think it'll help with um, recruiting. You don't have to have any previous experience to be a precinct worker. You just have to participate in a mandatory training. Poll workers work in the county where they are registered to vote. Reporting in Ottawa County, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. You can learn more about how to sign up to be a poll worker on our website at koamnewsnow.com. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us now with a first look at weather. Well, temperatures are in Joplin starting to go down to the mid 90s, so it's 94 out in Joplin. However, it still feels like it's 101. Humidity is above 40%, so today was hot and humid. That's going to continue for the next couple of days. We do have some nice wind gusts, about 20, 25 miles per hour. That may help a little bit with the heat, but unfortunately, with these temperatures, it's not going to help too much over the next couple of days. 94 out in Joplin, 96 still in Pittsburgh, 99 in Parsons, 101 still in Independence, 100 in Yates Center. On the western counties, a little bit warmer. Eastern counties, a little bit cooler. We do have an excessive heat warning now for most of our counties in the hot pink and then in the pale pink. That is more of a heat advisory due to the extreme high dangerous heat and heat indices. We're going to talk more about that in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Authorities arrest a deputy school resource officer in Newton County for domestic assault. Neosho police responded to the report over the weekend. They arrested this man, Joseph Childers, an SRO for the Diamond School District and also a Newton County deputy. Childers has been charged with second degree domestic assault. He is currently being held in the McDonald County Jail without bond. St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department will release two videos of a deadly 2022 school shooting more than 21 months after the incident. Two people died in the incident, including one teacher and student. The, stu the shooter, a former student, also died in the shooting. Several others were injured. The department closed the case on Friday, 641 days after the shooting, citing ongoing investigation. They went on to say it will release two videos taken the day of the shooting they believe fall under the Missouri Sunshine Law. It is obvious the two videos will be graphic and will force many victims and their families to relive this awful tragedy. St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department responsible for upholding the law and we must follow it, which is why we're releasing these two videos. But it's not something we take any joy in doing to re-traumatize people. Officers said the families of the victims had the opportunity to view the videos before the release. They've also asked school staff, other victims of the shooting, the suspect's family and officers involved in the shooting 
in shooting the suspect to review the videos before they're released to the public. Police in Independence, Missouri, investigate a series of car break-ins from over the weekend. Surveillance footage from several locations shows the suspects entering multiple unlocked vehicles and stealing one that authorities later recovered in Coffeyville. IPD have asked the public for any additional information or video. They also say car break-ins can almost entirely be eliminated by simply locking a car's doors. Even though the official start to Marion Days isn't until Thursday, it's already starting to look like a small city is growing inside of Carthage, Missouri. Every year, the annual Catholic Viamines celebration brings in tens of thousands of visitors to the Maple Leaf City. Guess the Carthage Chamber president says brings a big boost to the local economy. They're getting a lot of their staples, obviously food and uh, you know, extension cords, things like that. So I really think that our, our businesses do a very good job at putting those things that they are, what they're always buying up close. Thousands of visitors choose to camp, even more stay in local hotels and Airbnbs. Tomorrow on KOM News at 6, we meet a Carthage woman who opens her home to the cultural experience every year. The trade deadline clock for Major League Baseball is ticking. John Dales has the latest moves coming up later in sports. But first, a Bourbon, Bourbon County looks to combat food insecurity with the help of a financial grant. Kenneth Lee Simpson, a violent repeat. Lieutenant Governor. The Healthy Bourbon County Action Team received a grant to address food insecurity in Bourbon County. The $55,000 grant will be given each year over the course of three years. KOEM's Melissa Alexis has more. Because no one should be hungry or thirsty. Lisa Robertson is a community health worker with the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team who received a $55,000 grant to help with food insecurity in Bourbon County. She says the grant will allow them to do more to help those in need. I have a backpack that I take around to individuals in the community, like on the hot days. My backpack will be filled with ice cold waters and it'll be filled with snacks that we can give out to people that are just on the street and um, are thirsty and they just need that hydration. The Healthy Bourbon County Action Team helps those in need with finding transportation, shelter and food. She says they can't help the community without the help of grants like the one they received from the Kansas Food Action Network. I just see big possibilities um, because our main goal is just helping individuals and just helping people. And with money, money makes things possible, you know, because we don't always have access to money and funding to do what we want to do. And so having a grant um, given to us will be such a benefit to help this community. The organization has fed 400 people in need since 2022. And the executive director, Rachel Carpenter, says this grant will help them meet the needs of the community, which is crucial considering the rates of poverty in Bourbon County. But the data for our health rankings and 24% of our children are in poverty. And so that just plays a part into food insecurity. Um, and there's many uh, social determinants of health that surrounds food insecurity, whether it's transportation or access to food or Having someone have to choose between paying their medical bills and then paying for food for their table. Carpenter says anyone can be susceptible to food insecurity. We're just one to two paychecks away from being food insecure, really. Um, but we at the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team, we have a population of focus, and that is the disabled and elderly and low-income residents and minority residents. The Healthy Bourbon County Action Team is in the process of hosting meetings to figure out how to best use the grant to make a difference in the community. Reporting in Fort Scott, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. The organization is organizing a food summit within the next year where residents of Bourbon County can voice their needs. Well, a little later, an under 18 Pittsburgh football team hopes for a gridiron glory. John Dales has that story and more coming up in sports. And temperatures really start to ramp up this week. We'll talk about it right after the break.
Arts. It was mostly just hot today. We're dealing with the heat for the next several days. Temperatures in the upper 90s, heat index values in the triple digits. Overall though, not so bad today. Downtown Joplin, Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex looking pretty good. Mostly sunny out there. We did have a few clouds passing by. A few showers in those northern counties earlier this afternoon. Clouds are starting to clear out of the area. and We're looking pretty good for the rest of the night. However, we don't get a lot of relief overnight with temperatures still in the upper 70s and even reaching 80s for our overnight lows. We've got excessive heat warning for most of our counties that's in the hot pink. So all of our counties out in Kansas, Oklahoma and most of our counties out in Missouri as well. That's due to heat index values getting up to about 112. This stretches all the way through Wednesday afternoon. Then we've got heat advisories for the remaining four counties in our area and that's due to heat index values getting up to 108. Now Thursday, the heat advisories will be for all of our counties and we drop the excessive heat warning, which is the highest heat warning that we can get. So we cool off a little bit on Thursday, but it's still going to be pretty hot. Now we've got heat index values tomorrow forecasted 105 in Joplin, 107 in Pittsburgh, Oswego, Welsh, Vanita, Miami, 108 in Nawada, Independence possibly reaching 110 in some of these counties. Everyone is going to be in the triple digits though. Then we move into the actual temperatures for the day. It's going to be upper 90s, 99 in Joplin and Miami, 97 in Pittsburgh, 100 in Welsh, Vanita, Parsons, Fort Scott, 100 in Stockton as well, 100 in Grove, 101 in Nawada, Independence Sedan. So nearly all of our counties are in 99, 100, 101 for actual temperatures tomorrow. It's going to be pretty hot, pretty muggy, high humidity. We're getting humidity values above 40%, even reaching up to 50%. So with forecasted highs in the upper 90s and low triple digits, those heat index values could reach up to 110, 111, maybe even 112 in some areas. We do have a nice southwesterly breeze, about 15, 20 miles per hour, with gusts up to 30, especially starting in the morning. So it might bring some relief from the heat with a nice few breezes, but Unfortunately, we're not getting a relief from the heat for the next several days. We've got a heat wave due to the ridge forming over our area. We may see an isolated shower or two. We've got those chances due to surface heating, those pop up thunderstorms in the afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Again, most of us are going to stay mostly dry, though. It's going to be isolated, hit or miss. And then as we move into Wednesday afternoon, we've got a slight ridge forming in the area. May bring us some showers Wednesday and even into Thursday. We're going to keep an eye on that, but really our main focus is going to be the heat. So we've got an alert day set for Tuesday and Wednesday due to the extreme heat temperatures, temperature, actual temperatures, upper 90s, low 100s and the heat index value is getting up to 112 to 115 both of those days. Thursday we cool off a little bit, heat index values drop to the lower hundreds, and then we start to level out for the weekend and early next week down to mid 90s again. Lower humidity after this nice stretch of hot, humid weather. All right, well, definitely have to learn how to deal with the heat this week and just be safe out there. Yeah, mostly try and stay indoors. Definitely stay hydrated. Usually I'd say cool off at night, but I mean, Wednesday night, 80, 80 degrees. degrees. We're not getting a lot of relief there. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, still ahead, Pittsburgh post 64 Patriots play in the Kansas American Legion State Championship. And the Cardinals and Royals both make changes to their roster ahead of tomorrow's MLB trade deadline. John Dales has those stories and more up next. The 18 and under Patriots from Pittsburgh's post 64 wrap up play in the Kansas American Legion State Championship this morning. Patriots earned a spot in the title game by going four and one in tournament play. But post 64 falls in the state championship game nine to four to post 421 from Topeka. They're the only team that beat Pittsburgh in the tournament. They do it twice. Post 64 Patriots wrap up the summer with a 17 and 12 record. Finish the AAA state tournament with wins over Chanute post 70, Leavenworth post 23, and Great Bend post 180. The Major League Baseball trade deadline less than 24 hours away, and 
Both the Cardinals and Royals make some major roster changes today. We'll start with the Cardinals. They make a big splash with a three-team deal involving the Dodgers and the White Sox. St. Louis receives Chicago right-handed pitcher Eric Fetty, along with former Cardinal outfielder Tommy Pham, who makes his return to St. Louis. All that the Redbirds have to give up in the deal is utility player Tommy Edmond. His only at bats in 2024 have been as a designated hitter in Double A Springfield while rehabbing from a wrist injury after getting surgery in the offseason. Cardinals have a game this evening as well. They play host to the defending World Series champion Rangers. Redbirds have a record of four and five since the All-Star break. First pitch about 20 minutes from now at Bush Stadium. I'll give you an update and the final score tonight at nine on Fox 14 and 10 on KOAM. Over in the American League, the Royals are on the road facing Chicago. The White Sox, who were involved in that three-team trade and picked up a handful of prospects while also dealing away pitcher Michael Kopech. Royals just swept the White Sox a little over a week ago. First pitch tonight, 7-10. Royals also make a move today ahead of tomorrow's deadline. Coincidentally, it's with the team the Cardinals face today, Texas. Kansas City sends away left-handed pitcher Walter Pennington, who only appeared in one major league game in his career. They get Michael Lorenzen, who's a 10-year veteran and has pitched for five different teams over the past five years. He has a 3-8-1 ERA with the Rangers this season, and he threw a no-hitter as a member of the Phillies last August. The 2024 Olympics began over the weekend with the opening ceremonies on Friday night. Plenty more action continues today in Paris. Here's a couple of the highlights from today. Team USA women's basketball dominates Japan in its first game. That's the 56th win in a row for the Americans in Olympic play. The U.S. men's gymnastic team medals for the first time since 08, winning bronze. Beach volleyball court former NBA player Chase Budinger helps lead the U.S. to a win over France. American fencer Nick Itkin wins bronze, and the U.S. women's rugby team advances to the semifinals with a win over Great Britain. That's it for sports. We're back after this. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. A traveling memorial for fallen officers stops in the four states. Plus, we get the truth behind a recent campaign mailer, mailer that claims some Missouri lawmakers voted for free health care for illegal immigrants when that's not the case. And the Missouri Treasurer's annual auction is underway. We take you there. Those stories and a lot more tonight on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. The KOAM Skywatch weather, weather app. Speaking of weather, final check. Yeah, we've got pretty hot temperatures in the next couple of days. High heat index values as well. So we've got an alert day set for Tuesday and Wednesday. Still going to be hot on Thursday, but Tuesday and Wednesday is going to be pretty bad. All right. Sports now. Web City's a nine and under Little League Baseball All-Star team. They're in the Missouri State Championship right now. They're down five nothing in the first inning. A lot of game left though. I'll have an update later tonight. Oh, looking forward to that. All right. Well, thank you for watching. We will see you right back here at 10. Have a great evening and an even better tomorrow.